Hello and welcome to another modelling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, uh, another lengthy uh, discussion video. It's something I haven't touched on for a very long time. Uh, knockoffs, bootlegs uh, versus originals. Uh, believe it or not, I actually do have a playlist on it and almost a decade ago uh, while I was at the start of my channel, I uh, took a side and uh, was uh, more so on the uh, pro Bandai wagon though, not as um, hard as uh, some of the uh, diehards. And my concerns were that uh, people were making an uh, incorrect uh, decision or on uh, very faulty logic while uh, posting uh, point of views online which could be uh, hurtful to the debate and uh, the advantages uh, disadvantages the um, arguments are uh, delivered. So I uh, published a couple of videos uh, showcasing some uh, runners and uh, the advantages and uh, disadvantages. So uh, why am I talking about uh, this uh, topic? It's not really uh, modelling uh, related but it does deeply go into uh, the hobby politics and as there are just tons and tons of uh, comments and threads and points of views in uh, videos and mostly Facebook uh, Twitter, Twitter posts Social media is not very well organised that uh, you can read it from uh, the very start and have a very good comprehension or understanding of the issue. And people can uh, dogpile in not knowing what's happened at the very start and uh, realistically post and say some ridiculously stupid things. So what's happened? Uh, one of the knockoff companies, uh, Dragon Momoko, uh, posted all over Facebook from a uh, source, a distributor and um, seller of aftermarket goods in uh, China, that uh, Dragon Momoko has been um, served by Bandai in China under uh, Chinese uh, intellectual property laws and has uh, been ordered to cease production and uh, there is a uh, written um, letter uh, published around in the picture form of the cease and desist uh, comments of uh, Dragon Momoko as well as a series of uh, pictures uh, first time around uh, a bunch of um, government agents uh, storming the uh, manufacturing plant and a second picture of uh, the equipment as well as a series of uh, moulds and uh, a person uh, damaging the inner detail with a blowtorch. Now, everything has come from one source. Um, I am sceptical of uh, the whole uh, ordeal, if it is um, a marketing ploy, if it's to get uh, Dragon Momoko um, relevant to change names and uh, products, uh, to sell more product, or if this is actually the case and uh, the brand has been taken down or um, a campaign by one of the other bootleggers or Bandai. I'm not really uh, too fussed in the um, whole scenario. Uh, Dragon Momoko never really uh, released products that particularly uh, interested me, uh, nor I was uh, too familiar with what they released, though I did see uh, a couple of their uh, products. They tendently have um, a little more issue to be dry or snapped together than a Bandai kit, but with a little paint, uh, glue and work, it goes together as well as any other scale model. What I did find very fascinating in the picture was uh, the models of um, CNC machines and uh, injection moulding machines that they used, and as well as the picture of pile of moulds uh, stacked up with uh, spot rust. Uh, these uh, kits have a tendency of having a very rough texture on the surface of the plastic and uh, may uh, explain that um, they allow it to uh, rust over and uh, still punch out models with that very fine texture. Uh, nothing serious, something that one could definitely uh, sand and buff away. A Bandai, on the other hand, is far more known for... Uh, a very uh, unorthodox method of uh, CNCing um, a material mould before it goes into a uh, injection moulding machine and uh, polishing the internals by hand uh, well before they have a finished uh, runner out. But uh, this is uh, far off uh, topic uh, where we're heading at uh, the moment. The most important thing is the uh, argument is being uh, waged uh, online of uh, people who are for bootlegs and seeing how it's uh, healthy for the modeling community and those who say it's uh, damaging towards uh, Bandai. 
Uh, it does seem that uh, the community has uh, leaned more uh, pro bootleg than Bandai, as there's been um, a number of uh, grievances and disagreements uh, from uh, Bandai making uh, decisions on um, production lines, um, premium kits and whatnot. As well as uh, technology being on the rise in China and more sophisticated bootlegs and um, original kits coming out. Uh, that will be discussed uh, much later on in uh, the video. So we're going to be throwing out a lot of terms and I'll define exactly what uh, each type of kit and where they're coming from. An outright uh, bootleg. A bootleg model is uh, when the runners and the exact wholesale kit of a Bandai model is being copied uh, with very little uh, modification and released as a cheaper alternative of a Bandai model or by a, uh, another uh, manufacturer. They may sweeten the deal by doing uh, very minor um, upgrades to the uh, tooling, adding a couple of extra parts by replicating uh, bits and pieces, throw in stands, LEDs and whatnot. Uh, it's still uh, an exact uh, rip-off, though it could be in an aftermarket manner approved upon to what uh, Bandai has um, originally released and always at a uh, cheaper price. I do not necessarily subscribe to a um, outright uh, bootleg. I don't think it brings uh, much to the table unless there is an ample amount of uh, extra freebies uh, thrown in. A modified uh, bootleg. So this is uh, the camp that Dragon Momoko went into. Uh, they would uh, take uh, the runners and out of armor of a particular kit in a frame of a master grade, uh, some of the armor bits, and then they will originally design and throw in whole new runners to create a Gundam uh, that Bandai has not produced yet in the Bandai style. Uh, a lot of people have been using examples as uh, some of the uh, Wing Gundam uh, TV versions opposed to Bandai focusing more on uh, Kotaku uh, customs and um, other ideas. Uh, this is uh, just copying the kit wholesale, throwing in a few extra runners. These seem to be uh, very, uh, very popular and people seeing um, it's all uh, making the claim that it's uh, bringing a big service uh, to the community or um, the uh, whole hobby. I think it would have been very interesting if uh, they made the option to uh, sell the whole kit and as well as just sell the uh, upgrade runners that you can apply to a Bandai kit. Uh, that I would have uh, really, really enjoyed. Intellectual um, property or uh, stealing intellectual property in making your own original kit. This is a grey area and it depends on which uh, country, what subject, what not. Uh, believe it or not, many uh, military uh, kit manufacturers, uh, when they're building weapons, tanks, that sort of stuff, normally a lot of these tanks, cars, belong to a manufacturer or a company. And even though it dates back as far as World War II, many of these manufacturers uh, still exist. And uh, some of them have turned around and said, uh, we're owed uh, royalties uh, as your um, building and uh, releasing and using the likelihood of a kit that we manufactured 70 years ago. And I should see something in uh, return. Uh, there's been court cases and whatnot, and many of the uh, larger uh, companies have gotten away with it, or they've been uh, so small batch or uh, Chinese Eastern European based, they've uh, just uh, flown completely under the radar. In the, the debate of uh, Mecha and uh, Gunpla, this is making a Gundam model kit from absolute scratch, your own original runner design, um, system to snap them together, glue them together, scheme and whatnot. You may be basing a Gundam off the anime or source material and uh, making it um, as a kit that Bandai has not been around to getting to yet or will never make it or making a Gundam-esque uh, kit based off uh, fan art sources or the manufacturer's complete original uh, design. Still incorporating and using the likeliness of uh, the Gundam universe, the Gundam looks, uh, features, and sometimes the term Gundam. Uh, it is um, a, a common belief that, uh, and it's very common with the resin figures as well as soft vinyl figures in the United States, that you could do a Game of Thrones figure or uh, a Lord of the Rings figure, but instead of calling it um, Frodo, 
you just call it generic hobbit or generic uh, halfling and you can get away uh, with it as you're not using the actual title of uh, the intellectual uh, property or uh, the marketing device. Uh, in China, there's been times of um, things calling um, the brand Danban pretending to be Bandai or calling it to add Gundam or misspelling the word Gundam to saying this is not a Gundam, this is an original uh, design or a uh, variation. Uh, sometimes they just remove the word period and have it as um, the illusion of a generic art robot to trick people buying it or an original box art. Uh, sometimes they're called Gundam, sometimes they're not. 90% of the people that look at it know it is a uh, Gundam. But it's a complete original kit and the argument is is uh, these guys are exploring uh, the Gundam universe and the intellectual property and making marketable items that's suitable for a smaller batch or a smaller audience but not on the grand large scale that Bandai would target from their uh, marketing devices. Uh, this um, I'm not too fussed about. I would buy um, an intellectually uh, stolen... Um, kit uh, design. I've uh, funnily enough just uh, ordered a mass production Q Ballet uh, from China. Uh, I don't think this is hurting of uh, anyone. Uh, there is communities, competitions and groups that say that uh, this sort of stuff you should not post at uh, share. I'm fine with that. I'll uh, put it on my uh, material. And I don't think uh, this has any harm on uh, Bandai, but I can see that uh, they would exercise their muscle rights and whatnot of uh, contesting it. It depends on how greedy and how clever the company is in hiding themselves, marketing the product, selling, distributing, and not being so greedy as to go so far and making so much money that uh, Bandai's arm would be extended and uh, take it out. Uh, the last uh, topic is small batch garage kits and recasts. A garage kit is when a fan of a Gundam or something would sculpt a figure or sculpt a Gundam or an aftermarket part, cast it in resin and sell it in very small batches. It's very common in uh, Japan to go to an event like C3 or Wonder Festival where a bunch of intellectual property um, rights is being pulled and you can purchase a series of stickers for just a limited time or a limited run, sell a bunch of models uh, legitimately and be traded all over the place. You can uh, post these uh, models online, but they're still generally not accepted at official events, uh, publications or uh, competitions like the uh, Gunpla Builders World Cup. When these kits are sourced and they're recast and manufactured at a larger rate outside of Japan, uh, this is copying uh, the original model's uh, model, but um, this is, goes into a complete uh, different uh, debate of original resin over uh, recasts. Does the original modeler uh, care or wants to have in on the money? Um, does that money belong to uh, G3 and Wonder Festival that gets pulled in for the uh, manufacturers? Uh, who knows? Uh, this I subscribe to. I'm not too fussed. I generally try to buy um, uh, original garage kits or resin kits and if I can't I will lean on uh, recasts if they're no longer available as uh, recasts allow the availability of a kit that can't be built, bought or found for a very long time and it's uh, re-released and generally marketed for um, the material and the efforts made from it. So going back and uh, glazing over what we just talked about, uh, outright uh, bootlegs uh, sometimes or in the past they've been really inferior to uh, pretty close to Bandai Originals. Modified uh, bootlegs or knockoff, knockoffs, the Dragon Momoko stuff. Intellectual property theft and the completely original uh, kits. Uh, small batch garage kits and recast uh, garage kits. And they're generally uh, the five uh, topics that you will see around. Though the majority of the arguments you'll see um, against Bandai and these manufacturers will always be bootlegs versus originals or the slightly modified uh, bootlegs. Uh, the original uh, kits, the garage kits and recasts are uh, generally not touched upon. Uh, the resin community will have a completely uh, separate, separate uh, debate. Uh, they're normally very well uh, worded out and um, discussed, 
they, they can get vicious to the point where uh, people uh, divide the battle lines and stick to completely different communities to share their work and uh, modelers are generally in a very vicious circle outright uh, attacked and uh, bullied for uh, where they source their kit. It may be the wrong thing and it may even hurt an original modeler but I think uh, there is no point that uh, you should go out to a modeler and go hey that is a recast, you've stolen work you're a thief, you're a piece of shit, blah, 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 and just demean them as a modeler because they've sourced their model kit from the wrong um, source. And it's the same with uh, the bootlegs or originals. It doesn't really say much as you as a modeler, though generally uh, most of um, the serious modelers I know will always prefer uh, the original as uh, it will be generally a higher quality uh, finish and you'll get a better finished source uh, product. Uh, the uh, modded and uh, intellectual stuff, that's when you're playing in a completely different ball game and you're building something that's uh, not on offer. It's uh, a small manufacturer or um, uh, more rarity and uh, that you're willing to put the work in where um, if you're putting a bunch of work into a bootleg to bring it up to a Bandai uh, standard, uh, you'll find that you're not really saving the money or uh, the time and that you're just uh, going uh, backwards in the goal of uh, improving and bettering yourself as a scale modeler. On the toy collecting end when you just snap them and you might just throw a bit of gun the marker or uh, glue, completely a uh, different debate. You may employ basic modeling skills to buy bootlegs in mass to have a much larger uh, collection, though we're not really here to talk about the toy collecting community, but more so the scale modeling community. Now, when we're um, talking about uh, model kits and we're uh, judging uh, the molding, how they come together, the assembly, all that sort of stuff, if you wish to critique models, I believe you should have a firm understanding of the uh, injection molding process and then how um, the tooling that makes the molds they inject into. The biggest uh, factor in this uh, debate is uh, cost and pricing and there's uh, quite a bit of a breakdown in the um, manufacturing of the model and the uh, development in the model. Injection moulding process is where you have a pre-made tool mould, a mould made out of machine steel or some other uh, material that's not going to degrade under uh, pressure. The injection moulding machine is uh, quite a large uh, object, probably uh, the back of a, a semi-trailer uh, truck that involves a uh, rotating screw, air compressor, heating elements and the large mould that gets clamped in and uh, the plastic injected with great force to fill out all the uh, runners and pits and areas and the areas are uh, pushed out out of uh, very tiny uh, micro size uh, vents. Because uh, the plastic doesn't um, stick to the metal, the mould is uh, split open uh, by the production line arms and uh, the runner just pops out. So uh, with the whole thing of uh, people rush it, washing their uh, runners, there's no release agent. It's nothing like um, resin. You're able to handle and paint it and whatnot. Uh, the runner is wrapped in plastic and put aside for uh, putting together in boxes and uh, whatnot. The amount of material that goes into the mould, uh, high impact polystyrene, you can melt down other plastics, is uh, very cheap by the ton or by the kilo. Realistically the power consumption and uh, the plastic mixed together to make a Bandai uh, runner out of a mould is anywhere between um, 1 to 20 cents. Very very cheap process. To buy uh, one of these large injection moulding machines anywhere in the world, and I've uh, looked this up, a second hand one to uh, rebuild, is uh, several thousand dollars and a brand spanking new one is uh, 50 to a few hundred thousand uh, dollars. Wouldn't take too much to deck out a whole heap of uh, factories. The moulds are made uh, via a CNC machine, normally just a three axis, and uh, machine uh, tool uh, steel is very expensive, but you can uh, utilise other materials like uh, brass, stainless, uh, whatnot. 
in the uh, pictures from Dragon Momoko, the uh, molds were rusting, so most likely they were just a cheap um, spring steel or uh, a carbon steel. You would create a CAD file of uh, whatever you're uh, drawing, of the molds and whatnot, and you would feed it through uh, the CNC machine through a G-code or um, a CAM software. Uh, the CAD software, you draw the object, you put it through the CAM, it creates a path for the tool of the CNC machine to uh, engrave the runner into the metal as uh, the negatives on uh, both halves. Bandai does this process, every model uh, manufacturer uses this process and the creating of the mould is called the tooling, the tool making. When they say a uh, model has been retooled, the uh, mould has been visited and they've either manually polished up and fixed up the tool for uh, better uh, fitting of the model, or they went back to the CAD files and made a whole new uh, mould. Uh, this can be deceiving as sometimes there's uh, no improvement to the model, uh, sometimes they rework the CAD files. So all of this uh, from the uh, point of view of Jagger Momoko, uh, they steal the CAD files, they look at the Bandai original uh, runners and recreate uh, the CAD file uh, by measuring and studying. A good engineer can do that. Uh, dial it in. Uh, CNC it out. Uh, getting CNC work done by multi-axis machines in China is very cheap and is a great source for many businesses to do uh, that sort of work. So it's not very hard to get done. You buy a series of injection molding machines and you just uh, start smashing out those runners, popping them in boxes, shipping them out uh, to Taobao and all that sort of stuff and away you go. Uh, your production costs are so less and you're able to lower the price, thus why people uh, gravitate towards uh, the bootlegs and it's the example of I don't have as much money, I'm going to buy a uh, bootleg or a slightly improved uh, model. What a lot of people don't um, understand, and that's talking about the injection molding process, uh, Bandai side of things, their costs and the reason why they uh, charge as much as they do for a model. And if you look at uh, Bandai, their marketing process compared to other uh, manufacturers and uh, model makers, is that uh, they just flood the market with as much models as possible, they keep uh, the cost down, but they're also proud of the fact that they keep uh, the work in creating uh, Bandai kits, in manufacturing them and distributing them purely in Japan and retaining uh, Japanese jobs. So these are Japanese labourers and engineers are going to cost a little more uh, than they do in China due to uh, labour law and whatnot. So the costs they have to um, contend with, and most of the cost is regarding labour, the time you pay for people to uh, operate these machines and whatnot, uh, includes creating the source design. Uh, you've got uh, Sunrise, they make the anime, they do the mecha drawings, all that sort of stuff. You pay them, but surely there's an income through uh, the release of the uh, anime itself. And uh, being all in the one company, uh, they have to uh, share that cost. Uh, the marketing and uh, advertising, you've got all of uh, the ads, the magazines, the competitions, display, going to all the events and whatnot, going down to the uh, distributed that also advertises uh, the models, individual uh, shops and uh, local publications, and uh, the intellectual uh, property, uh, someone like uh, Kota Bikir. Kota Bikir kit is far more expensive as Kota Bikir does not own any intellectual property except for uh, the frame arm girls and um, the frame arms. Uh, everything else, if they make a uh, Ghost in the Shell kit or a Zoid or whatever, they're going to the copyright holders of Zoids, they pay them a fee, uh, then they uh, do the tooling, they make the moulds, they inject and they release a small production guaranteeing that they'll sell it all to make their money back and into a profit. So if you're looking at the weight of plastic and the size of a Master Grade to a size of a Zoid, the Zoid will always cost more money as it's a smaller production run. They have to pay all the same costs of uh, manufacturing and uh, whatnot, and they have to pay the company for the rights to use um, the intellectual property of the model 
that they're making. So Bandai definitely has uh, that advantage. Bandai also does a lot of community uh, engagement and a lot of their uh, profits and expenditure of uh, selling kits go into that. They have uh, multiple campaigns where you buy these uh, kits and you get the cards and you get a chance to raffle to win up to free kits or Gundam markers or whatnot. The Gumbot Player Builders World Cup where it appears in every country and you're able to visit, have a look at the models, see the promotion and the pictures of the competing models being shared around on the internet and uh, whatnot, a chance to compete yourself. Uh, workshops and the uh, caravan program to introduce people and get a free kit in their hand to try it out before they buy more. The Gundam Info uh, portals, uh, the anime being exposed to you for free through uh, YouTube and uh, that as well. Uh, mostly being used as a vehicle to advertise a uh, Gundam and that you want to buy more from uh, watching the anime. But uh, all of these costs pretty much uh, pile onto each other. And there is a set amount of kits that Bandai needs to sell to meet to break even, where they uh, go into profit to meet the shareholder demands and uh, pay their profit out into investors. So Bandai has a lot of liabilities, a lot of things that can go wrong, and the requirement to make a lot more money before they uh, head into uh, the profit uh, territory. With the bootleggers, Dragon Momoko, all they're worried about is paying the cost of uh, the venue they're renting, uh, the injection molding machines, paying their staff. If they have to steal or develop uh, the uh, molds and the CAD files, and away they go. The more they produce, they break even as soon as they can. They get straight into profit, and their biggest marketing ploy or way of getting attention and selling models is... We are cheaper than the source, we do a little improvements, we're slightly better, but we've also got some drawbacks and we're uh, disadvantaged by these um, other ways. It's uh, very popular with the third world that um, where you're located or where you are, you want uh, to buy models and you can't quite afford it. It also markets very well to uh, people who are very greedy, they want to have more models for less money. And for the few that want something that's improved or a model that Bandai doesn't even develop, uh, their modified uh, bootleg or knockoff models, that also sells very well. And that's what sort of got them in the uh, spotlight of uh, late. And obviously they've been selling very well and uh, spreading um, around to the point where they're all over uh, social media. A great vehicle to uh, advertise a product without um, much uh, marketing through uh, people who build the products to share it out and that was uh, enough for Bandai to discover them and using intellectual property Japan, um, laws in China which if you register your um, property in the Chinese courts and the Chinese government systems you're able to sue them and uh, get to them in that country. Uh, Bandai has sued a uh, bootlegger and knockoff company before in the past uh, many years ago and that made a uh, controversy uh, way back in that period. I don't remember if I made a video on the uh, topic, though many other people uh, did. So if we compare all the mounting costs Bandai has, and all the costs the Dragon Momoko has, the biggest cost of them all, besides the machine, the property, buying in the plastic, the moulds, the maintenance and all that, is how much you're playing your expert employees, the engineers and the labourers. And if you're looking to get things uh, manufactured, the most popular countries for that is always uh, Vietnam, Thailand, China, India, that sort of area. Uh, the wages and the standard of living is far low, lower. Uh, they don't require as uh, much pay, yet they still have uh, access to very high-tech um, knowledge and uh, machinery. And that makes just uh, absolute sense. It also leads to some reasons why people don't necessarily get stuff manufactured there as um, a leak in your IT systems or your filing systems and staff can result in your intellectual property molding or um, patents uh, being stolen, used and mass produced immediately at the factory down the road or uh, somewhere else. And when you look at the mass population of um, China, 
uh, it is very hard to track down individuals, companies and whatnot to go into a uh, civil um, uh, disagreement in court or small claims and sue someone for uh, rights. So uh, the time it takes Bandai to build up a case and whatnot, they're hoping to threaten and scare off uh, other bootleggers and not necessarily hunt down and sue each and uh, individual uh, one. Another big aspect in the cost of these kits is shipping. Japan does have a significantly more expensive shipping unless it is uh, exported in uh, bulk to a uh, wholesaler. So if you're looking at buying stuff through uh, your Ebays, your um, Hobby Link Japans and whatnot, um, yes, you're buying the kit at a Japanese uh, price, but then you double that through shipping. Uh, once everything is exported through um, China and Hong Kong, if anyone who's ever imported stuff from uh, Taobao and whatnot, uh, that could be far more uh, cheaper from uh, that port and a significant uh, discount. As well as finding the bootlegs, uh, obviously companies like Amazon and eBay and all that uh, protect each other and um, able to be lobbied by um, companies like Disney and Bandai and all sorts of copyright holders. You put uh, Dragon Momoko and all that sort of stuff on eBay, they have a tendency of quickly disappearing. So for a long time, you'd have to find uh, individual uh, shops, uh, shop through um, their system and whatnot, and they have it shipped out and hope it arrives, arrives to you safely, as a lot of uh, these uh, small uh, web stores are um, just a small micro operation, hobby shop, or uh, home business and can uh, fall out of business or suddenly stop shipping quite uh, instantly. Uh, this is where systems like uh, PayPal and eBay works out very well, where you have the rise of your uh, Alibaba, AliExpress, Taobao, uh, all those uh, sort of systems, and uh, that's pretty much giving um, direct uh, access to the manufacturers and larger wholesalers to the rest of the world. If you have a small uh, hobby shop, toy shop, they're able to go there and uh, order as many kits as they want, freight it together and sell it very cheaply uh, on the streets, markets, uh, whatever of your uh, country. And they do reach all countries. I have seen um, some markets and smaller toy shops sell uh, bootleg uh, Gundam kits before. And you can uh, definitely um, agree that it is uh, quite rife in... Um, your more uh, Southeast Asian countries where they're far more popular, well-known and desirable, especially for the cheap. But you're able to also approach uh, these uh, platforms and uh, buy them yourselves uh, very, very cheaply. And uh, this is uh, finally allowed um, access of uh, these kits to everyone else as people have had um, access to Gundam kits through local stores, eBay, Hobby Link Japan, and um, all of those other uh, outlets. They are on an even playing field of uh, marketing and being able to be sold and uh, bought and from trusted surfaces. And it's down to, do you want a Bandai kit? Do you want a knockoff? And for the reasons why of the five uh, topics we've um, discussed on bootlegs, modified bootlegs, intellectual property theft, uh, original kits, and your uh, resin stuff, of course. So with uh, all of this um, down, uh, as I talked about my point of view uh, in the past, I was pro-Bandai, and the biggest reason was how Bandai um, engaged the community and how it's uh, been damaging to Bandai. When we didn't have a Gunpla Builders World Cup and all that in Australia, I was worried that uh, the rise of parallel importers and bootleggers would uh, prevent the growth of the uh, wholesaler. And that would uh, steal any chance we have of um, campaigns, Gunpla Builders World Cup, um, access to the portals of uh, Gundam Info, competitions, workshops, all that sort of stuff. I go to cons and I engage in the local scene and um, I enjoy all of those uh, perks. And the better the sales uh, has been reported from the wholesalers, the better the sales and the more that uh, Gunpla grows in your country or distribution network, 
the more Bandai offers. They start giving you event exclusives. When you go to an event in, in Australia, you can buy kits that are only available there. P Bandai kits are suddenly becoming um, exposed to Australia at a very affordable rate of being officially distributed. Uh, some kits are going to be sold in Australia if it's only exclusive to Australia in a limited uh, manner. And uh, later on, things like um, if you break or lose a part, you can contact the distributor and uh, get another sheet. Or if there's damage to your kit, uh, the um, return uh, experience can be a lot quicker. And availability and the speed of uh, availability through the release in Japan to the release here becomes at the same day or the gap is far more closed. So that makes it... Uh, competable or com um, able to compete with uh, parallel importers once you throw the bootlegs in the mix getting them here as quickly is harder though people are willing to wait due to uh, price or if the kit is uh, very very um, special in the way of uh, intellectual theft or resin or just being absolutely original. But it has been noticeable that um, stores that are very happy to stock and sell official Bandai goods are also has no problems uh, stocking uh, kits that are intellectual theft and that are absolutely original and not competing with the sales of their Bandai kit counterparts. This is uh, more or less the uh, essence of uh, the debate and it's uh, flaring up or uh, there's a lot of antagonistic uh, behaviour going on that the uh, pro Bandai people are uh, egging on the bootlegging people and it's easily interrupting to uh, all sorts of uh, flame wars and whatnot which uh, this time around is being very well uh, moderated by the uh, group of uh, Facebook groups and other um, social media uh, organised outlets so I have to admit that I'm uh, pretty uh, impressed with that and uh, the two camps are carrying on as they usually do but uh, how should you approach uh, this debate style of building and all of this if you're a toy collector uh, realistically there's no effect you buy kits you snap them you hang out and do your uh, own thing if there's uh, creeds or rules or uh, speculations in um, the toy collecting communities or Facebook groups, whatnot you're a part of, yeah, I'd follow uh, what is recommended there, but just do you. Uh, there's no effect. For uh, your modelling communities and whatnot, there are quite a few communities that are sponsored by a distribution um, network for that country, Bluefin, United States, Hobbyco Australia, so on and so forth. And uh, the Facebook group is to keep that community together and talk about when there's um, events and uh, promotions and all that sort of thing, as well as uh, supporting that local region of modelers, as well as kindly inviting in overseas people to see what's going on and utilize those online resources, which is very kind and it has a chance of uh, crossing over what modelers are doing in uh, what country. It's very, very cool. They will state that they don't want uh, the marketing or the carrots of um, bootlegs introduced because uh, they've got an agenda going on and it could uh, cause uh, issues, uh, especially in laying out the rules and whatnot, such as uh, the Gunpla Builders World Cup. Uh, Bandai would have no interest while promoting their own uh, product and running that competition to have people competing with uh, inferior and cheaper uh, kits and in a way that they're not making any money whatsoever. In the event that uh, Dragon Momoko, Supernova or some other bootlegger wins a heat in the Gunpla Builders World Cup, that's uh, putting out the wrong message and doing harm to Bandai where they're putting money in promoting Gunpla to buy Gunpla and uh, enjoy it and do the whole uh, experience of the competition and sharing on social media and whatnot. You will also find that there are ample um, online communities that are uh, sponsored by stores that do not have a stake in uh, Bandai or distribution. They might be sponsored by uh, Hobby Link Japan or uh, someone else. Uh, they're not as uh, fussed as long as uh, their web store is being promoted and they're uh, getting uh, sales out of it, or communities that are uh, not sponsored at all or maybe sponsored by um, people that uh, carry such kits, uh, that would be the uh, appropriate place to bring up our uh, discussion, debate, show your builds, where you buy them, and uh, 
all of uh, that jazz. There are appropriate groups. Uh, you have a look at the rules section. They're normally uh, very prominently uh, displaced in um, the opening posts or uh, description section before you press the join button be it uh, whatever uh, platform, and you can see uh, how they are accepting and not. And as it's a very prominent uh, debate, uh, it will be uh, known uh, very, very uh, quickly. If you are into the whole proper scale modeling competitions and all that sort of stuff, uh, direct uh, knockoffs. I would completely avoid as uh, modelers build up a reputation of uh, trying to improve themselves and get the best out of the model and the best out of themselves. And to get the best result, you should have the best clean um, canvas or slate to work on. And the more involved and better of a model you get, the more time you spend on a kit. So realistically, it's not unheard of to spend uh, weeks to months on a master grade or even a high grade of uh, masking and Obviously you who are uh, watching this video already have your mind uh, built up if you wish to uh, purchase um, this sort of kit, build them and uh, display them, or uh, if you wish to uh, only build uh, Bandai kits, or somewhere in the middle where you like to try a few out, uh, incorporate them in scratch builds or kit bashes or whatever excuse is laid out there, just be aware that in some communities um, utilizing them just for parts, scratch builds, modifying or whole builds is uh, generally not um, acceptable and once you're starting to get into promoting yourself as a scale modeler, building um, a portfolio, a blog, a channel, doing competitions and even heading out into the world of uh, commissions, it's generally not really acceptable in those circles to be doing um, outright uh, bootlegs and it might take a hit to your reputation. Though once you start heading to modified bootlegs and intellectually uh, stolen um, property, uh, original kits, uh, at that stage it goes down to the client competition comp um, platform and whatnot is appropriate. So you just need to read the uh, situation. If you just build for yourself, do the odd sharing and don't really have much of a voice or uh, a platform of your own to speak of uh, again appropriate uh, community and uh, that's that I've uh, seen people that are as brash and stupid to go on an official uh, Bandai uh, page uh, group a Gunpla Builders group uh, go on Mr. Kawaguchi or another uh, Bandai staff member's wall and go why don't you promote bootlegs? Why don't you build a bootleg? Why can't I have a bootleg in the Gunplay Builders World Cup? And actually outright attacking him, thinking that they're the uh, leader of the crusader of uh, this debate. They are uh, employees and they handle um, modelling day in, day out uh, as a part of their hobby and as a part of their job. It's that sour the experience by dragging him into this uh, consumer debate is uh, highly inappropriate and just bothers them and takes time away from them doing that and uh, from promoting the hobby or doing tutorials and teaching people and inspiring people and all that sort of thing. So you should not uh, rope in um, people of that calibre in as well as uh, other noticeable voices uh, in the hobby. Uh, everyone has their reasons to which uh, side of the stance they are and normally uh, they don't want to talk about it or bring it out. So it's just uh, leave them alone. If there's an open discussion, uh, engage in it. Uh, if there isn't... Um, leave it be, it's not really much of a thing. Even if someone's going on about uh, this is their Bandai build or this is their Dragon Momoko build and they're uh, promoting or putting this uh, post in an appropriate place, jumping in and saying uh, all bootlegs are bad, you shouldn't post this here, is a pretty shitty thing to do unless uh, that community group line or rules of that particular group states that they couldn't do that, then a friendly reminder and uh, contacting uh, the administrator is um, all that's uh, really required and uh, leaving him to do it. So why is the two online extremes in this debate um, absolutely and utterly uh, stupid? The information and arguments that I looked at both sides is uh, very, very interesting. I see the pro bootleggers uh, uh, attacking uh, Bandai and uh, going in means of uh, greed or uh, hip pocket argument. Most of the time they are snappers and not so much in the realm of uh, 
full-fledged uh, scale modelers. Uh, some of them can get into it to uh, source parts to repair kits or do uh, modifications. Uh, they're more of a minority. But um, most of the arguments I see from the pro bootleggers is uh, an individual is uh, poor. Uh, they're from a third world uh, country or that they desire to have the very best at their very lowest uh, price. I can understand someone who can't afford a fully fledged uh, Bandai kit, but uh, the requirement to have um, a handful of new master grades or a perfect grade uh, back to back in very short periods of time does seem to be um, in excess of uh, gluttony and greed. Uh, you're cutting back on quality and cost and everything else just to get more rapidly but not necessarily that these people would be buying this quantity of uh, Bandai kits collecting them and building them in uh, one um, sense I don't understand getting a large collection of easily readily available kits and not um, building it very rapidly and then saying that you want it to be as cheap and readily available as possible a lot of these people that make uh, this argument very very young uh, you're looking at um, high school age or very very young adults not yet hitting um, the uh, job market or uh, being unemployed so they're relying off uh, some sort of uh, pocket money part-time job or uh, social security uh, benefits and um, not really uh, furthering whatever they're uh, doing just uh, building and uh, mucking around they don't really already seem to be uh, well adjusted in uh, work life um, uh, living. Uh, with the instability of these individuals, uh, engaging them is uh, quite silly. It's just uh, the best to leave them alone and hopefully the community that they're trampling on and doing what they're doing will uh, wake up to the fact and um, purge or moderate them uh, themselves. Uh, other arguments are that uh, it's a source of uh, modifying, building up uh, parts and practicing. Uh, Bandai has always uh, issued a large plethora of kits for uh, practice and whatnot. You've got uh, high grades and SDs that are just uh, as cheap as chips and even in uh, poorer income um, prone countries uh, such as those in Southeast Asia, uh, their proximity to uh, Japan and the distribution prices seem to be uh, very cheap. Uh, saving up the amount, uh, building, polishing, airbrushing and whatnot is appropriate. But if those are around are doing the exact same thing, just stick to uh, generally what the uh, crowd is doing and that's really uh, a safe uh, movement. Uh, there's no reason to sort of force uh, this opinion or the way you do it onto uh, others if they have a different way or uh, interest. On the other hand, uh, the pro Bandai camp will uh, go into uh, not um, buying the kits, will make it that uh, Bandai's business model will suffer, they won't release as many kits, they'll lose money, they'll go in, out of business. Uh, this is absolutely uh, idiotic as uh, Bandai, a part of the whole Sunrise um, package, um, company corporation, is... I don't like to say the terms so big they can't fail, as we've seen financial institutions and banks and whatnot collapse, but they're so ingrained in the um, hobby modelling and toy collecting anime um, industry that uh, they have uh, very safe um, assets and uh, they uh, post uh, very, very good uh, returns. So uh, they're generally a very, very uh, safe uh, company to invest in, and it's uh, something that you can safely see that they're going to uh, make kits and release kits um, for a very, very long time to come. Uh, Gundam's uh, a very popular franchise worldwide, and uh, in the foreseeable future, there's going to be a lot of models, even if they do take um, a tumble or a loss uh, sales-wise. Nonetheless, uh, they've shown interest in uh, constantly releasing kits and developing and uh, engaging. A few bootleg sales uh, here and there will affect small community distribution, so that country may not get as many p bandais or event exclusives or events like a Gundam Expo or Gunpla Builders World Cup or whatnot. You would affect the immediate small community, but you're not going to affect uh, the large um, picture where they um, main target, obviously, the Japanese audience. Uh, will always generally um, go for that as it's 
as cheap as chips on the streets and it obviously costs more money to import and outside our kits thus uh, raising uh, the price. The base um, customers are very safe, uh, the base income that Bandai gets will uh, always be safe. What will suffer if uh, they do take a loss in uh, profits and they need to cut back the fat here and there uh, would be uh, events, promotions, uh, free anime online on Gundam Info and all that, uh, giveaways and uh, the Gunpla Builders uh, World Cup if that is shown to not uh, promote the um, product as well overseas as it does. So there are drawbacks if you don't support them, though the reason why the Pro Bandai uh, camp is uh, very misleading and just uh, attacks your uh, sudden urge of, oh, Bandai's in trouble, they're going to stop making Gundam, um, I better support them or uh, no more Gundam releases or no more Master Grade releases or whatnot for me. Uh, people do have, again, it goes back to greed and they have the tendency of uh, going to a selfish um, inwards uh, thought of um, I want more and if the supply is cut, I can't get more. And you do see that on uh, the pro bootleg side where when Dragon Momoko um, had the announcement of uh, being seized and being out of production, uh, people rushed out to buy as many of the kits as possible. Uh, scalpels raised uh, the prices of the kits to be greater than even uh, the cost of a Bandai model and uh, that panic uh, led to all sorts of uh, interesting behaviour among uh, the community which I found uh, mildly disturbing yet uh, very interesting in a psychological uh, background sense. If you do have a sense to engage uh, these arguments or these two extreme sides, the best way to do so is in a logical uh, manner in uh, destructing and pulling apart of their arguments um, using um, good sources. Uh, this video is uh, not too bad of an idea and explaining why a lot of their logic is uh, just wrong for both camps. Um, there's no need to take a side and even if you do take a side there is uh, ways of uh, being quite uh, moderate in uh, both ways yet still respecting if um, what they're doing is not harmful to a community themselves or anything else. In the end, uh, what will happen to Dragon Momoko? Now, all we've seen from these posts online is they've got raided uh, the supply of kits are not occurring anymore. We've uh, got all of these um, limited pictures and this uh, statements from uh, Bandai in China. And uh, the only um, evidence that I'm seeing that uh, they're in trouble is a guy bending over these uh, rusty old moulds uh, with some sort of uh, welding rig. And there's a lot of speculations, but from what I can understand, that uh, if you put enough metal slag or cuts um, into the mould, it won't make uh, accurate um, castings, and thus the product is uh, not marketable or sellable. All they're talking about is the destruction of the moulds. And as we talked about earlier on in the uh, process of mould making, injection moulding, and the cost of releasing a product, uh, tooling the mould... It's a very, very cheap process. If you've made the CAD files and you can input that into the CNC machine, more moulds can be created and everything goes straight back into our production. If uh, there was talk about the CAD files being deleted and the office being pulled apart and um, equipment being seized and whatnot and um, the people with the skills who did the CAD drawings and the tooling and the CNCing has been taken into custody, that would be something to be uh, of concern. What I'm thinking could quite be possible, and we've seen this before with uh, moulds and tooling from other model companies and CAD files and uh, whatnot, is that the skilled individuals, uh, the intellectual property, the CAD files have disappeared, relocated and resumed uh, business under a new company name or uh, under the same old uh, company name and releasing the same old products as well as new products again. Uh, it does take a while to set up um, a manufacturing um, plant, so they could disappear anywhere between six months to a few years, though I can assume that those same Dragon Momoko um, uh, kits, especially the modified bootlegs and um, absolute uh, new uh, models that have been designed from scratch, will appear again 
and most likely will be sold under a new uh, title or brand as uh, Bandai is on the lookout for the DM uh, branding and uh, logo. It is also possible to hand over the skilled individuals, uh, moulds, CAD files to another um, knockoff uh, bootlegging company and allow them to uh, assume and continue with manufacturing. Uh, manufacturing can also uh, leave China and be done in somewhere such as uh, Eastern Europe or uh, Thailand, Vietnam, somewhere in Southeast Asia. There's also a chance that no one will show any interest in the moulds as uh, Bandai is out to sue and uh, take revenge and they can just be in constant uh, circulation storage or everything could truly be uh, destroyed as information is just uh, seriously uh, limiting. What we can definitely know and assume is there are many other companies. Uh, the fact of uh, bootlegging is it's, it's a hydra. Uh, every head you cut off, another two, three heads are going to sprout out. Uh, the way that Bandai is going about it is uh, absolutely wrong. But uh, the question is, is there anything else they can do? Uh, one complaint is, why doesn't Bandai invite Dragon Momoko, its staff, and tooling to be um, an extension of Bandai and continue their works? That cannot really work because it doesn't go in the way of uh, Bandai is um, or Gunpla is a product of Japan. It's made by the Japanese uh, for the Japanese. Uh, introducing uh, a Chinese source, I don't think uh, politically and ethically uh, works in the whole uh, realm. Even though uh, the company does uh, get all of its uh, toys and other products uh, made in other uh, parts of uh, Asia. Uh, that is uh, very, very interesting, but um, I can't see uh, that being the case. It just, it, it's just not even on the cards, even though uh, when Bandai has uh, sued artists and um, commission modelers for amazing work and employing them as uh, sculptors uh, laying um, later on, there's just too much uh, bad blood, uh, there's too much uh, publicity. Uh, Bandai wants to show that they're stamping out and being hard on bootleggers and not saying, hey, if you're doing a good enough job, we'll come along, bail you out, and you become a part of uh, the company. All that really is doing is inviting people to bootleg more and for the end goal of you can be a part of this uh, bigger company and um, have access to more resources, money, and all that sort of thing. It's really uh, just the uh, wrong message. Interestingly enough, another criticism a lot of people have uh, with Bandai, and the reason why a lot of people are being more pro-bootleg and moving away, is uh, the whole uh, limited model. That uh, Bandai is pumping more resources in creating original kits into P-Bandai, and not so much um, Master Grades and Perfect Grades. Uh, the development of new kits is uh, done in, um, and Bandai has shown ample publicity and video and promotional material on uh, how they make a Bandai kit um, in their uh, Shizuoka factory. They wear the Gundam uniforms and it's all themed and cute and all that sort of stuff, but they go from the uh, research and development department, which is a room full of computers, and they're making the CAD files, and they've got the mini CNC machines doing the uh, prototypes, and then they've got the production lab with the injection molding machines, and they're just pumping out the runners. When a P-Bandai kit is being made, they're getting an established uh, mold, and they might make a small attachment um, extra runner or one extra uh, mould for that extra piece or weapon or whatnot. They might be chopping and changing moulds and having one runner from one kit and another runner from another kit that's on um, a compatible inner frame or a compatible uh, high grade. So all they're doing is mixing and matching moulds, putting it in the ejection moulding machine and maybe putting different colour plastic. Uh, Bandai pumps out a certain amount of uh, kits from its uh, factory and at one stage, I think after its 30th anniversary, they talked about um, selling up to uh, 300 million or over a billion kits or something. Just a crazy amount of model kits have been sold out uh, to the community. Uh, they can just keep pumping out models as long as their injection molding machines are going and they've got staff feeding in the plastic and the molds and whatnot. In the research development area, they can only have a certain amount of people uh, cutting up, designing, scratch building uh, kits, uh, going through their marketing department if it's appropriate and it's what the uh, market wants to buy. 
and then eventually uh, producing those molds and preparing them to do a full run in the injection molding machines. P Bandai is not really uh, taking any resources, money or attention away from the development team. If anything, Bandai is producing more kits at the moment uh, today and this year than they've uh, ever done it so in the past just in its Gundam lab alone and they're also going pretty hard with their range in uh, the Dragon Ball Z figure eyes figures, the uh, busts, uh, the new IP of uh, Girls and Panzer. Uh, they're going very, very heavy in the uh, Star Wars IP, which I don't blame them. And those kits are just absolutely mind-bendingly amazing and uh, marketed in a way where it's um, targeted for scale modelers. And so those who are complaining that uh, Bandai kits should have the inclusion of water slides and all this other thing, uh, they can afford to do it. Uh, they can price it in a way that it's um, marketable to do it. Though for some reason uh, the Japanese market is not demanding for them, yet it is an expectation for the Bandai Star Wars kits, which is uh, to a much older audience, to contain both uh, the stickers for the toy collectors and the decals for the international scale uh, modelers. So that pretty much uh, puts uh, that debate uh, to rest. Though... Realistically, there is many, many, many military kits and other brands that don't release the appropriate or proper uh, water slides, or if you're building a tank or an aircraft and you want a scheme that's not covered in the kit, buying aftermarket uh, decals is not that unusual in uh, the scale modelling world, and it's not really that much of a uh, complaint that uh, a kit does not contain the correct uh, canopy masks, photo etch, decals all that and it goes into a whole thing of uh, deciding on the scheme and buying what is required uh, to uh, finish the kit. It would be nice if the water slides uh, was introduced and I think if there's that much of a demand of it uh, the bootleg companies could look into investigating that and incorporating it in their product and that might give the message to Bandai that they could probably do the same thing. Though if their uh, market line is more so uh, kids, youths, uh, people overseas, uh, toy collectors, snappers, uh, that don't really uh, look at the scale modelling side of things, they're less likely to want to incorporate uh, water slide decals as uh, people see it as uh, troublesome to apply it on their model, don't have to use top coats, all this other thing. It makes more sense to have the dry transfers and the stickers, even though they're quite uh, ugly in our opinion. Now, all of that done and said, uh, what's happening uh, with Dragon Momoko is uh, not that different uh, from the scale modeling world. Uh, we've seen this happen before with uh, companies, uh, companies um, that just cost too much to manufacture uh, models in their country. They haven't relocated to another country well. Their debts are um, greater than uh, their assets and uh, they're spiraling out of control and going out of business. Airfix is a good example as uh, they've gone bankrupt uh, a number of times and they're bailed out by another um, modeling uh, company uh, becoming a larger source and then going uh, bankrupt again. They're absorbed by Humbrol, they're absorbed by uh, Hornby and they're still not uh, off the rocks yet. Uh, there was a big outcry from the community though they just don't release enough new products and uh, constantly releasing the old products. There's only so many um, people on this earth that is going to buy a 1970s, 1980s era aircraft or uh, tank and uh, build it. And among all the modelers, those uh, subjects and age of the tooling is not necessarily in their interest, even though it's retooled and uh, approved upon. Uh, they really need to expand a lot faster and harder than they're doing, but... Uh, they only release a certain amount of uh, new products as they go. Uh, if we're going closer to uh, Japan, Gundam, science fiction type stuff, we have uh, Fine Molds. Fine Molds was a micro company um, that did a little bit of uh, military stuff. It collaborated a lot with um, other companies and doing styrene, resin figures, all that sort of stuff. But they are mostly famous for how detailed and how wonderful they made uh, ships and uh, vehicles from the Star Wars uh, universe. 
They were very expensive, though they were the most accurate and um, fantastic. They got this license uh, under uh, the LucasArts uh, brand. When it was sold to Disney, uh, they were told to cease um, production, or rumoured to told to cease production, destroy their stock, destroy the moulds, and just exit. They no longer had the contract, and we later on learnt that Bandai got the contract. This immediately led a lot of bad blood with uh, Bandai that uh, there is no way they're going to release anything uh, equal to what Fine Moulds uh, was doing. And this was proven wrong to us. The Bandai kits are uh, simpler to build, uh, just as detailed, just as wonderful, and uh, in some aspects, some of their builds are a more superior kit. Uh, luckily, uh, there was permission given that uh, the moulds were handed over to another company that had a contract with uh, Hasbro and um, Disney, uh, Ravel in the United States, and they were to continually um, release uh, repressings of the same moulds that uh, fine moulds had. And if you look into the history of uh, moulds, who originally made the tooling and the moulds for um, a kit, uh, pre-CNC era, and uh, how the same kit has passed from different brand to different brand, yet uh, the runners and the instructions remain the same. It's the case that a good model kit never dies and never uh, disappears. Uh, the investments of uh, getting on the market just uh, costs way too much and um, just putting them straight into production as what the bootleggers are doing is just way too cheap. So if a model manufacturer goes out of business and they've got all these molds and they're looking to uh, get a little more capital to pay their debts off, they may go to another manufacturer and go, hey, sell you these molds for a certain amount and they can see it as an immediate advantage as they can just go straight into production and being sold as a part of their uh, catalogue. So... Uh, this makes model building very uh, complex in a military category or um, IPMS as you're looking at a build and go, oh, is that the um, old frog build? Oh, no, it's been re-released by Ravel or someone else. It's just very uh, fascinating to play these games. As there's more of a monopoly in mecha and Japanese science fiction modeling, we are familiar with one company uh, holding an IP and a model. Uh, unless we're looking at uh, Macross, but that was from the Golden Age, and um, all of the old Macross kits that Bandai um, sells occasionally all used to belong to uh, other companies such as Imari, Ari, and a host of um, other uh, brands when uh, Macross was uh, a very new thing from its original anime. So we've seen um, anime model kits change manufacturer hands, I can assure you that this is probably going to happen with Dragon Momoko. And uh, realistically, there's just nothing to fear from these uh, fear-mongering or attention-grabbing posts that we're seeing all over social media. Uh, using this as an excuse, I'm not too worried, but uh, my word probably shouldn't be too trusted on that as I've never found Dragon Momoko's uh, lineup to be uh, that interesting to buy, collect and build for myself. Uh, in conclusion, I would like to talk about uh, the Chinese modelling industry and how why um, there is a lot of talk that uh, bootlegs are still very inefficient, uh, poor quality, poor quality plastic, poor fitting. Realistically, a mould is a mould. If uh, the bootleg company has poorly tooled the mould or didn't uh, recreate the mould um, perfectly or accurately or the CAD files are bad, uh, you will get fitting in that issue. But when there's talk about uh, good quality plastic, bad quality plastic, Bandai quality plastic, that's all garbage. High impact polystyrene is polystyrene. It's all made in China, it's distributed, it's cheap, you inject it in the machine, it's the same results. Where the results may differ is the quality of the machine, if it has sliding moulds, if the tooling is good, and if it's heated properly. It's the process of you melt the plastic, you inject it in, it cools down. If the plastic is at the incorrect temperature, 
it can burn, get brittle, fall apart while it's building, or if it's too cool, there's going to be bubbles or missing sections or whatnot. Uh, Bandai obviously has the right engineers, machines, testing facilities and whatnot to get the mix just right, and they've got a good product going. Though if you've got uh, more inefficient um, engineers, less experience, cheaper equipment, you might not have gotten uh, the mix right as you're quickly trying to get things out into production. So if a bootlegger is very, very new to the game, the earlier kits are going to be of a lower quality, but the more the practice, the better they get. And getting into the Chinese modeling industry, uh, there is a lot of up-and-coming companies from uh, China, Vietnam, uh, Eastern Europe, and some of the work and expertise that are coming out is absolutely amazing and enjoyable. It's put a huge spin on the uh, military community. And you've got uh, companies like uh, Ming and uh, Bronco and whatnot. They're just putting out these ultra-realistic, uh, nice models with all the decals, the photo etch, the uh, canopy masks, just everything you need to put out a showstopper uh, winning uh, model kit-wise. It's really looking at, uh, you've got uh, Tamiya, which is starting to look more like a cheaper uh, brand, and uh, their style of uh, making um, kits and the detailing and whatnot is starting to look uh, aged and uh, at a place in the modern age of what's expected in a model kit. And I can see that Bandai, which even does seem to be uh, pretty cutting edge from our point of view, is also falling behind in... Uh, who's going to be the new superpower in the uh, scale modeling uh, world. And as uh, the Chinese hobby industry uh, grows and the military kits are going to get better, you can bet these uh, bootleggers, these uh, aftermarket uh, model manufacturers are going to improve with them and put uh, their uh, quality knowledge as well as uh, what the modelers want into uh, their product for international and uh, Chinese uh, release. So the exact replica, um, the outright bootlegs, I would not be surprised if uh, building one and looking at it, uh, the quality, uh, the snap, uh, the plastic and everything would be on par with Bandai kit. What makes Bandai very famous and sets them apart from other science fiction and mecha modelers is uh, how they hand and manually uh, polish the moulds. They can get um, an injected plastic surface uh, so shiny and so glossy. It looks like it's been uh, polished or gloss coated or um, buffed in some aspect. Uh, some of the new kits like the high grade Cube LA and whatnot is a very, very uh, good example. You can get these tiny uh, scratches just from the parts touching each other. And... Uh, Obviously, this takes a lot of man hours and polishing and whatnot. The bootleggers uh, may not be interested in going that direction and just uh, pump it out and allow the modeler to polish them themselves or um, paint them or whatnot, which makes the product, again, a lot cheaper and in the hands of the modeler if they want to uh, do that or not, if they want to polish product or uh, not. But in the end, uh, saying that the plastics are high quality or the plastics are low quality, uh, that's just not really uh, the issue at all. It's all about uh, the process of the heating of the plastic and uh, the mould itself. And Bandai is just really into uh, polished moulds where China has a different uh, goal, expectation and a marketable product to a completely different market uh, that's not so much into toy collecting but more, more into uh, model building. This is um, my uh, scattered thoughts and discussion and whatnot on uh, the whole uh, bootlegging, Dragon Momoko and all that. In my final thoughts, my final conclusion, the debate doesn't really hold much weight in communities or industry. It doesn't affect anyone if a group of people or an individual buys bootlegs or only buys uh, Bandai exclusively. Uh, the many companies out there like Danban and um, Supernova and whatnot don't really make much of a difference in the grand scheme. But you can see how Bandai wants to get their pound of flesh and not make the issue any worse than it really is. It's just uh, the cycle of uh, the law, um, intellectual uh, property laws, 
uh, distribution, sale, marketing, business and industry. It's something that as us as consumers we can observe and make a comment on that we can't really be involved in. And even though we can vote and march with our, our wallets, if we're unhappy with Bandai, we buy less Bandai and go to the other manufacturer. If Bandai is doing very well, we reward them by buying a product. That their global reach is so big, almost like a Coca-Cola-sized corporation, if the small people are marching with their wallet away from Bandai, they're not going to feel a pinch or uh, anything. It's almost like um, your protest is in vain even though they do spend some attention to the community in deciding uh, what's their next kit they're going to make or how they're going to engage in the community further. If you're generally unhappy or making uh, crazy assumptions or complaints like uh, you think the plastic's all wrong or the fitting's all wrong or kits are disintegrating or you want uh, water slides, they're very likely to uh, ignore you. Though if there is a rapid discussion on what kit you would like to see built uh, next or if uh, there's a new anime or if you really like I'm Blooded Orphans and you hated Wing or something, they may be chiming into that. They may be not. Who knows? All I know is um, a lot of the kits they release uh, gets hit right in the head and strikes the right chords sometimes internationally. Sometimes they strike the right chords um, in Japan but some of the biggest uh, changing and battling aspect of our Banda is their flagship uh, models has always been um, Gundam and there's never been anything that came close to taking Bandai's resources attention or anything away from that. They do have more kit releasing resources than they ever had before, but now they're releasing kits for um, Star Wars, they're releasing One Piece kits, they're releasing Dragon Ball Z kits. Those are all equally massive um, IPs. Uh, Star Wars is pretty much um, the Gundam for the West, and Gundam is Star Wars uh, for the East. Uh, they've got both uh, tied in, so they're financially healthy. But they're going to be putting a ton of attention into the Star Wars stuff. And One Piece being uh, the biggest anime at the moment. A lot of attention also, obviously, is going into that and uh, Dragon Ball. So if you're seeing a less attention from Perfect Grade or Master Grade, it's probably because that engineering is disappearing into uh, those kits. And if you don't buy those kits or subscribe to them, then you're already not putting uh, the money towards that. Though I can assure you, a completely different market, including my own pocket, is definitely investing in uh, those areas. And with how good they are, you'll be uh, very uh, hard-pressed to wrestle uh, Bandai's attention away uh, from those pursuits. Anywho, I hope you've uh, found this uh, rambly, very long uh, discussion video on uh, bootlegs and the whole argument and the whole process uh, behind it uh, interesting. If you enjoy these long videos, let me know. If you've got an opinion, idea, suggestion, or your own point of view in this whole debate of uh, bootlegs versus originals, Bandai versus Dragon Momoko, all that sort of thing, uh, drop a line in the uh, comment section below. And most importantly, uh, when we're um, discussing it, we're all scale modelers. We should be enjoying each other's works. Um, it doesn't matter who's building what, really, and uh, how they're promoting it. There's uh, just no damage being done. In the end, it just doesn't matter. That's that. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. I do have a uh, outreach and presence on uh, Facebook. I normally put content up on that, uh, such as finished models and work in progress pics and whatnot that may not necessarily appear on the YouTube channel for weeks to months as it takes a long time to build up uh, content, edit it up, um, upload it, uh, title it, and allow it to be scheduled to be uploaded onto the once or twice a week upload schedule that I have. Though making this video now, being a later on in the week uh, video, this will be pretty much uploaded immediately. Got any questions? Happy to hear them out. Happy to contribute in that way. Happy to read comments. And um, yeah, if you've got another topic you guys want me to talk about, weigh in, or uh, discuss in one of these lengthy videos, very happy uh, to entertainment. Uh, just drop it down below and I'll see if I could uh, find any meat on that bone to uh, do it. But yeah, I know a lot of people like to just uh, listen to this while uh, modelling. So the uh, pictures aren't anything too interesting. 
and I'll leave it at that. Catch you guys next time.